Bushido Blade, a weapon-based fighting game released on the PlayStation 1 in 1997, published by Square and Sony Computer Entertainment, is a unique title. And for this episode of What Were They Thinking, I ask mostly what were they thinking in terms of character design and story. I have to ask because any fighting game story is going to be ridiculous at best because the story changes based off of the player's chosen character. Canon story comes into play if there are ever sequels or spin-offs that shed more light into the world of why these people are fighting to begin with. But in most fighting games, if you pick, say, Scorpion vs. Sub-Zero, they get completely opposing endings based off of their personal character history and their personal ending. This game, it's kind of hard to take any of the characters seriously based off of their designs. And the fact that the character himself is really just a facilitator for the weapon you choose. Bushido Blade was unique in, as a weapon-based fighting game, it wasn't like Soul Calibur, where Siegfried will always have a giant sword, Mitsurugi will always have a katana, Ivy will always have some sort of whip concoction. These characters have unique stats that allow them to pick one of several real-life weapons ranging from rapiers to sledgehammers. Now, some characters excel at some weapons, while others excel at different classes. Like lighter weight characters, excelling with rapiers, sabers, faster, lighter swords, whereas some of the heavy hitters will excel with the nodachi for its range, or the sledgehammer for its brute strength. The weapons themselves allow for a unique fighting experience, as all characters have a high, medium, and low stance, which changes the attacks and possible combos, in addition to the attacks and possible combos presented with the current weapon they have equipped. Some weapons seem incredibly ridiculous, like a dual-bladed spear, and some just seem completely overpowered, like the gentleman with the pistol. The character designs themselves don't seem to match the time frame or even a style that would fit in feudal Japan. Some characters seem as though they walked straight out of an Akira Kurosawa film, while some characters seem like a mix between a Lone Ranger and a Power Ranger. It's really unknown as to why the designs for this game made it the way they did. When the style of the game lends itself to a completely different feel. The concept of a weapon-based fighter without any health bars, the possibility of one-shot KOs, or the fact that you can actually directly damage various limbs of your opponent, slowing them down, making it easier to get the kill shot. The physics and the concept of the game don't seem to mesh with the story and the designs. There are six playable characters, all whose names that I will not try to pronounce for fear of butchering the Japanese language. Several characters are unlocked for versus mode, including the aforementioned gun-wielding sociopath, who just in fact breaks the game as one shot, one kill. <laughs> but for a unique experience, it's fun to give him a try. I do ask what they were thinking when it came to the design concepts of the game. And I do ask, what were they thinking in abandoning the game? When seeing future titles 
most popular Soul Calibur, making five entries in its series installments. Bushido Blade got a sequel before falling along the wayside. But given its unique style of no HP, realistic weapon-based combat, I feel that a modern revamp would do it well. So long as the characters actually seemed to fit the world, and the story made some sense.